Hello friends and supporters, my name is Michelle Elmer. As you may know, I joined the Latin American team for Code Pink earlier this year, and since then I've been so impressed of all the meaningful and exciting things Code Pink has done. I'm extremely proud to be part of this organization and happy to share with you our 2019 achievements. Since 2015, children under the age of 5 die in Yemen every 10 minutes from acute malnutrition as a result of a US-sponsored war. At Code Pink, we have worked on a broad-based campaign with other peace, human rights and humanitarian groups to pressure Congress to end US engagement in the Saudi-led war. But after Trump vetoed it, we knew we couldn't stop there. So we worked on our Boycott Saudi campaign to serve our ties with the Saudi regime until they end their war on Yemen and the repression of women, journalists and those who engage in peaceful dissent. Instead of investing in diplomacy and life, the US is constantly preparing for war and draining resources from programs that invest in the well-being of people. In 2019, Code Pink worked with our partners so that our society divests from weapons manufacturers. We also attempted to convince mayors and presidential candidates, as well as candidates for Congress, to refuse to accept their contributions. One of the big winners in making huge profits out of global suffering is BlackRock's CEO, Larry Fink. So we were also busy making ourselves heard everywhere he went. BlackRock invests in companies that manufacture and sell death and violence from drug manufacturers. After 16 years protesting the IPAC conferences, we successfully convinced nearly all of the 2020 Democratic presidential candidates to refrain from attending its annual convention. All the Democratic presidential candidates are boycotting APAC. Why is that? Last time around, Kamala Harris went, she had a talk with them. This time she didn't. Why? Because MoveOn.org and Code Pink, which are on the fringe, told them to boycott that. This was a major victory. Next, we launched the Skip the Trip campaign to discourage new members of Congress from joining IPAC's propagandistic trips to Israel. Disgusted by Israeli war crimes and committed to BDS, our movement for equality and justice in Palestine is growing rapidly. In 2019, we continue to fight against the Trump administration's attempt to provoke a war with Iran. Holding Iran to a new level of accountability for its destructive behavior, especially its lawless pursuit of ballistic missiles. Thank you. That is the most ridiculous thing I have seen. The world community wants to keep the Iran nuclear deal. Our allies are miss, miss, miss. The, the Germans, miss. the French, the, the, the British. You want to hold they the want to keep in this deal. The world community wants to keep the deal. Let's talk about normal Man. countries. Let's talk about Saudi Arabia. Man. Is that who our allies are? Listen. They are Listen. the biggest of threat to, to the world things. community. You need to and let's talk. Oh, you're hurting me. You're actually hurting me. At the same time that we led two peace delegations to Iran, we came back with first-time stories about the devastating effects that the U.S. sanctions have on the Iranian people. We joined youth from all over the world for the youth climate strike. We reminded everyone that war is not green and that the U.S. military is a major polluter. For two months now, every Friday, Code Pink and over 200 of our friends march with Jane Fonda for Fire Drills Friday to drive home the connection between the climate crisis and militarism. In April, Code Pink and Popular Resistance founded the Embassy Protection Collective to protect the DC Venezuelan Embassy from supporters of a US sponsored coup. Joined by dozens of coalition partners and hundreds of activists, including Reverend Jesse Jackson, we upheld the principles of international law by exposing the history of U.S. coups, sanctions, and support for repressive, undemocratic regimes throughout the world. We also exposed that point to Pompeo, war criminal Elliot Abrams, and other coup leaders.
We advocated for whistleblowers. We supported fearless Congresswoman Rashida Talib and Ilhan Omar against the Trump supporter campaign to demonize them. We worked with the Poor People's Campaign, called for a peace in North Korea, traveled to Cuba. We stood in solidarity with the Bolivian people in the wake of the US back coup in Bolivia. In 2019, we did a lot of exciting and important things. On 2020, we need to, and we will go into a higher gear. We enter 2020 facing violence, militarism, racism, Islamophobia, global inequality, climate chaos, too many weapons, and the largest military budget in the US history. We know to affect change, it takes more than elections. It takes local organizing, disrupting the status quo, resistance, engagement, coalition building, action, strategic thinking, elevating the stories of those suffering the abuses of the war economy and the US hegemony, and it takes diplomacy and love. The love of humanity, the one love we need for peace, justice, a healthy planet, and home. And that's what Code Pink is all about.